that I wear doing my mom's manicure. And she chose Pearl. So this is one of the newer colors. Apparently it's back in stock and this is the first time I'm using it. So this is exciting. So very quickly, I'll show you how, what the difference is between Purity and Pearl because we tried them both. And I thought this would be lighter, but it's actually brighter. I'll show you what I mean. So we're gonna do use this one. As you can see, my mom has a little bit of ridges, not too much, but a little bit of ridges. And this happens where the ridges, so there's just a little bit of weakness in the nail. And, um, and this is why this happens. So the best thing to do is really to take care of your nails and use a lot of oil to condition the nails, but I know it's difficult sometimes. You can see the same thing here. It's like this little ridge. So the problem is somewhere here in the matrix area. So it's very difficult to really fix it. Same thing here. So we've been using actually this, I have to say on and off a little bit. Um, so I try to use it twice a day for seven days, but I'll be honest with you, it just didn't really happen. Um, it happened on average, I would say once a day. <laughs> but you can try it. So what this does, it's supposed to bond the, the nail layers together a little bit better. It's supposed to repair the broken bonds, basically. So I started using this before each manicure just to, you know, give the nails a little bit of a pick-me-up, but it has to be used a little bit more to see the difference, I think. So now this is supposed to be you um, sit on the nail for about 10 minutes. So in the meantime, I will shape the nails. I'm gonna put my fan on, I'm gonna use my metal file. And, but obviously I use the metal file because I like using metal files. So it's easy for me to clean them and disinfect them properly. But if you're using, if you're doing your own manicures, then you can use whatever file you like to use. And I really suggest doing your, your, if you're doing your own manicures weekly, because that way um, you are preventing anything, any damage to the ends when it comes to um, ridges like that from happening, because you're gonna keep them at a reasonable length this way. The longer they get, the more the chances of them splitting. checking the hardness of the nails you know they're I have to say they're a little flexible they could probably use a little bit of a hardener but again this is something that you want to use on naked nails you have the client has to do it themselves it's not something that I can really offer in a salon because it's not like a one-time application it's something that you should be doing you know, every second day or three times a week or something on bare nails so you want to make sure that you don't apply hardeners on the nails that are brittle. So actually, my mom's nails are flexible, these four, but the thumb is very, it's hard, which is actually quite common. So if you are using a hardener, but your nails, not all your nails are flexible, then just use it on the flexible nails. Don't over harden hard nails. When I'm in doubt, about the shape, I turn the hand around.
Like some oxygen. There are two very good hardeners that I really like, and they are made by Mavala. Mavala. So it's, I think it's a Swiss brand. And one of them, the original one, has formalin. So the formalin is very often listed as formaldehyde, which formaldehyde is a gas. And formalin is actually a mixture of um, formalin, uh, of formaldehyde and water. So that creates a different chemical. And it's, in my opinion, it's very safe to use when used properly. Um, it's very easy to overdo it, so you have to kind of know what you're doing. But it's, it's a very good, helpful product, and for some people, it's, it's very, very beneficial. I have a very good article written by a chemist, and that's soon about myth of formaldehyde or something like that. So I highly recommend for you to read it. So it, so there was two um, products made by Mavala. So one has the formalin and the other one has dimethyl, dimethyl urea. So that one is a little bit slower acting. Okay, I had someone at the door. What was I saying? Uh, the dimethyl urea is a little bit slower acting and it's less likely, you're less likely to overdo it, so over harden your nails. But obviously once the nails are a little bit harder, when they're better, then you wanna slow down with the application of dimethyl urea. Anyway, they're very good because they are not, those products, they're not polished to base, meaning that they are like liquids that you can just apply on your nails. And what I would do is I would not wear polish for the time of the treatment, um, harden your nails, and then start wearing the polish. Another very, very important thing is a lot of people think that when their nails are damaged, they need a hardener, which is very incorrect. So hardeners are great for nails that are healthy. As you can see, the surface of this nail is perfectly healthy. There is no um, over filing. There is no damage to, to that nail. So if the nails are naturally kind of healthy, as good as they can be, and they're still flexible, then you can use the hardeners. But if the nails are damaged, absolutely not because um, you can actually end up with allergic reaction because if the nail, majority of the nail is removed or filed, then you can actually saturate the nail to, to the point of the, the product saturating through the nail plate, reaching the nail bed underneath and creating allergic reaction. So, and really, if you have a very, very thin nail, you don't want that nail to be brittle on top of it, right? So. Uh, in that case, when there is damage, the damage usually can be supported a little bit, but it just has to grow out. So I know a lot of times, and that takes a very long time, so be patient. If the nails are damaged, like after you're removing um, acrylics or whatever, it can take up to six months. And the new growth is going to be better, but the old growth just has to grow out. It's just like having hair that's you know bleached and damaged. It just has to grow out. Okay, so now I'm going to nudge back and I'm doing this lightly. So there's two pieces of skin here. So I'm nudging back the skin fold and the cuticle is right here. So I'm actually not pushing back the cuticle. This is um, something that people often say, they're pushing back the cuticles. And what you really wanna, not really push, but you wanna nudge back is the the skin fold, not the cuticle. The cuticle I'm gonna uh, do next. So this is step number one. So I'm doing this quite lightly because I actually want the cuticle to st uh, stay behind. You see, this is the cuticle. I don't want to shove that cuticle under the skin fold. Um, I want it to be left on the nail plate so I can remove it. And this is a little bit from picking. So any trauma to the skin will usually harden the skin because your skin is trying to protect itself and it's going to harden up because it's going to 
expect more trauma, anticipate more trauma, and it's going to harden up. By the way, you know, there's pros and cons of everything, obviously, but when someone wears nail polish on a regular basis, the the nail bed, so the pink part, <clears throat> actually usually extends and the nails are not as flat. But wearing nail polish all the time can also damage the surface of the natural nail. So you're gonna, you might have a, a longer nail bed, but more um, nail beds, not nail plates, but more damaged nail plates. Again, the nail plate is this part above the stick. So this is the nail plate. The nail bed is the part, the pink part underneath and that's the part that the nail plate is connected to. So as usual, I'm going to do a dry manicure because I, I like doing dry manicures on the clients, but I don't actually do dry manicures. I don't recommend doing dry manicures if you're doing your own manicure because then it's not necessary. If you're doing your weekly manicures, then you can just follow my weekly manicures where I do my own nails in a very, very, very simple way. My needs as, an, as a nail technician are slightly different because my clients usually, I mean, let's just be realistic, don't care about their nails, like they don't take good care of their nails, let's just um, be more precise. They care about their nails, they just don't take care of them. <laughs> and um, they don't use any creams usually, it's just the way it is. Um, and they don't come every week. Because if they did, then I also could do the manicure like I do for myself. But this also is very good for me because I'm not introducing a lot of water to the nail. Client, by the way, washes their hands before we start doing the manicure and I also wash my hands. That's the best way of uh, cleaning your hands. Um, I don't usually use those alcohol sprays. Um, I, I ask the client to wash their hands. So I'm not introducing um, a lot of water. So usually a client washes their hands for like 20 seconds if we're lucky, right? Um, and the nail has to be submersed in like, in water for like 60 seconds for the nail to really s swell up. So this is why I don't do regular manicures. Uh, sorry, um, usually I don't do the manicures using any type of water or Blue Cross or anything like that because I want the nail to be not too wet. The polish lasts better that way. So as you can see now, see I'm removing the cuticle. And when that skin fold is nudged back on a regular basis and it's healthy, it's going to sit much, much better around the nails. It's not going to be long and, and you know overgrown because Usually it's overgrown because of the cutting and or because it's just stretched because once it's stuck to the nail, it stretches. So, and it takes time for the skin to unstretch itself, for the skin to uh, shrink back. So we just have to keep the skin nice and flexible, nice and elastic and healthy, and then it's going to shrink. It's going to unstretch itself. That is the cuticle here, the flakes. And you know, you really have to have a lot of practice with the electric file in order to do this without damaging the nail because you can very, very easily damage the nail. So even if you're a nail technician and you don't have specific training for electric file, then I don't suggest you start just using it. I actually started using electric file like 20 years ago. I bought the best e-file on the market, which back then was like, I don't know, $800 or something. I bought Erica MT20, um, which was like, people used to call it the Rolls Royce of electric files. It's amazing, amazing Japanese machine. And I remember kind of thinking, my God, I spent so much money and I hate using it because <laughs> I was so scared of 
using it back then I was doing gels so what I how I started using it is I just would shorten the nails and remove the bulk of the gel but the rest the prepping of the natural nail and everything else I did by hand so um, it took me a while to really get the feel for the electric file and I also did additional training I did training with Ellen from the Ontario Neon Institute. She was the trainer, or she is probably still the trainer for, actually no, they don't exist anymore, but I think it was American Association of the File something. Um, I'll look it up. Anyway, so she actually taught me a lot. And then I went and I also trained with Kathy Rochemont, who is an icon when it comes to Canadian industry. She has um, developed a line that's called Nail Basics. And I flew to Edmonton from Toronto. And I spent two days with, with Kathy and Tim, amazing people, by the way. And I learned a lot, a lot from Kathy. And actually Kathy had one of the, the first Watch Me Work videos, which was extremely impressive because she was showing like real work so she was showing a rebalance meaning like a fill like a gel fill but it's a little bit more than just a fill and she showed how she fixes little you know lifting areas and how to shorten the nails what to do if there was pocketing it was an amazing video and it was one of the first videos like this on the market was filmed very very well I think they spent fortune filming it like obviously hiring people to film it and edit it because back then you know we didn't have cell phones like that literally that was 20 years ago I think something like that and um, I think I watched that video I'm not even kidding a like hundred times because I knew that video by heart and now we have so many videos I post videos weekly <laughs> it's a completely different world so now I'm going to just smooth the free edge and just the cuticle area. So you know what? Um, because right now I just removed while we were doing some testing different colors on the nails. So I removed the polish with acetone. And of course now the nails are dry because they have a bunch of dust. So that skin just looks really weird, but it doesn't. Like once in real life, once we apply oil and um, once we remove the dust, the skin is going to look good. And again, cutting it is not going to solve any issues. It's going to make it worse. It's going to make it look maybe good if you like that look. I personally don't. But long term, it's going to make it um, grow more. And I know it because my mom used to cut the skin around her nails. I used to do too. That was the thing to do. Uh, and now the skin is way, way better. Because once you cut it, the skin grows more. Anyway, so I'm just smoothing the area where the cuticle was to make sure there's no catches. And that's it. And now we're going to, well, I'm going to use prep. Wipe the nails clean. wipe the free edge as well because sometimes there is some dust there or some oils or something cream or whatever as you probably notice or <clears throat> if you're not new to the channel I don't apply cream until I'm done with the polishing and that comes from probably the years of doing um, gels and enhancements and things like that because we would never do any creams before any application because we you want to make sure that the surface of the nail is extremely clean that there was not even a speck of dust because if there was anything left on the nail the product is going to lift so I kind of do the same thing now I prefer to really see what's going on I don't like to have any oil in the crevices anywhere it's probably not as important when it comes to nail polish but I just like working I, I, actually, I, I can actually see better 
when the the area of the nail is drier. So I'm going to use one layer of base coat because this is what I normally do. When it comes to wrapping the free edge, this is something, it's a personal choice. Some people feel that it makes a difference. I don't really think it makes a big difference. I actually started doing it, <laughs> to be honest with you, because so many people are commenting and asking me why I don't do it. But again, it's something that you have to see if it works for you. When the nails are very short, I don't really think it makes a big difference. When it comes to dazzle dry, you have to make sure that the base coat is applied evenly and that it's applied carefully everywhere. That it's not flooding the skin, but it's also covering the whole nail. Because if you leave a, and people do that often, I see when they are not very familiar with the system, they just kind of apply it not very carefully. And because of that, sometimes, especially when you have sheer colors, the, you can see some lifting. Because if the polish is applied on a naked nail without a base coat, it's going to lift. It's going to like flake off. So you want to make sure that you, when you are applying the base coat, you turn the nail side to side. So as you can see, I'm kind of not doing this, but I'm turning the nail here. I'm really kind of wiggling in. By the way, my hands are not shaking when I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm just trying to wiggle the polish. So now, it's so funny because the base coat dries in matte. Sometimes, <laughs> and I have clients that I've been doing their pedicures for like two years, and they're like, oh, you don't need a base coat? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I already applied the base coat, but it's just matte. So sometimes people just, I mean, I don't blame them. It's just interesting. They're not paying attention to what I'm doing. I had one of the viewers, my goodness, that was asking for like a pearly white polish that we used to use in the 80s or something. This is it. I remember loving this. I think it was in the 80s. Mamy w latach 80-tych takie kolory się używało, nie? Takie białe perłowe. Mhm. Mhm. Tak, jeszcze raz wracają do kolorów. Yeah, I remember wearing this kind of color. And fuchsia pink clothes. It's crazy. It's like this huge, huge craze. Fuchsia, fuchsia, bright pink. When you do wrap the free edge, make sure that it's dry because sometimes the, when the base coat is thicker, um, it, it takes longer to dry. So you wanna make sure that the base coat is dry fully before you put polish on, because if you put polish on to like here, I'm not sure if you can see it. There's this area, I'm gonna to touch it. Okay, it's fine. Uh, if, it's, if it's still wet, the polish is going to stick to it and become like a little stringy and you can destroy the formula because now you're putting the brush that's like touched the base coat into the bottle and it can introduce ingredients that were never in a nail polish. They're in a base coat, but they're not in a nail polish. So you don't want to do that. And they they call it, when you do, actually, I really highly suggest it to do a dazzle dry training when you are getting into the system. It's, it's, it's a different system to use. It's not very difficult, but it's just a little bit different sometimes. Okay, see, this is dry no drying time. Um, they call it that you can contaminate the bottle of your nail, nail polish, but that doesn't mean that 
it's like radioactive or something. It just means that it's not as good as it should be. And what can happen to the nail polish, it can become very stringy. So yeah, you, you lose the, the quality and there's no um, way of fixing it. So like you don't wanna destroy your $22 nail polish for sure. Seriously, my stomach is making noises life you especially with these type of colors you want to make sure that you do full strokes from the cuticle um, area to the free edge um, because sometimes these colors tend to show strokes this is not bad it's actually a very nice application so someone had asked me if what are the colors good colors for a beginner so this would be one of them i would say I would say the Stardust is fantastic. I absolutely loved my nails. It lasted like 10 days, 11 probably. And then I just took it off, but it was perfect. It's incredible. By the way, the, 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 one of the most important thing that you can do to improve the wear of your nail polish is improve the quality of your nails. So if the, the nails, the healthier the nails are, the better the polish is going to last. And also when the nails are not too flexible, flexible nails usually don't hold the nail polish very well. And by the way, I'm full of wisdom today. Uh, oil application, even constant oil application is not going to make your nails too flexible. So don't worry about that. So how do you know if Dazzle Dry is dry? It becomes matte. One thing about Dazzle Dry that is, hmm, I'm not too crazy about, but it is what it is. It could be its benefits that it dries to a very, very thin um, layer and it shows an imperfection. So it doesn't cover imperfections very well, but I think could be because of that, it's very, very gentle on the nail. Maybe it moves with the nail a little bit more. I have no idea, but I really do see a big difference in the quality of people's nails when they wear nail polish all the time. So, I mean, I do get those, the, the kind of feedback, people saying, I started wearing Dazzle Dry and now my nails are damaged, but they're not comparing it to wearing other brands because that's not what I see in the salon. So when people are wearing a regular nail polish all the time, especially on toes, because that would be um, the most common thing, they would have more surface damage compared to all the time wearing Dazzle Dry. But nails, in my opinion, are always the healthiest when they don't have anything on them. And if you just really take care of your nails and if you're using oils and treatments and all kinds of stuff, I don't believe that the nails are Sorry, that the polish creates a protection from anything. Nails naturally have a protection. They have the top layer of the nail that is a protective coat. So when you take off that layer by buffing, then yes, the nails are going to be damaged. But if you take care of those nails, then they're going to be healthy on, on their own. They don't need nail polish. I applied the top coat, as you can see, I usually very rarely speed up any of my videos because that gives people the wrong idea when it comes to um, the, the application, the, the way I apply polish. So the top coat, and some people have issues with um, little bubbles. Top coat has to be applied kind of slowly, you wanna control it. And also how you put the brush back in the bottle you don't wanna be slamming it because that can also create bubbles. So you wanna be putting the brush gently into the bottle and don't put it all the way in, just dip it for as far as, far as you need to when you're polishing your own nails or your client's nails.
As you can see, my nails are a little yellowed. I'm wearing other brands. So I think I'm just gonna wear Dazzle Dry for now because I cannot stand the yellowing nails. I don't like it. It bothers me. For some people, it doesn't bother them, it bothers me. Okay, so we're gonna leave them for five minutes to dry and we'll be back to show you how they how they look. This is three minutes and this is, look, it's, okay. it's pretty dry, which is incredible. I'm gonna wait five minutes. So normally, especially when it's a new client, but with regular clients, I always repeat because, you know, people forget. I always tell them that now I use more oil, but they don't have to use this much oil. So this is how much, and I actually show them. One drop of oil and go like this. And this is enough for your hands. So you don't need to be applying so much oil and have greasy hands. You can actually even grab a towel and just wipe your hands and this is not greasy whatsoever. So I recommend doing this after each hand wash. It makes a big difference. Now, I gave my mom choice of this and this, my favorite hand creams, and she prefers this one. This one has an amazing smell, I love it. Um, but this one has like a very fresh cucumber smell. So that's what we're gonna do. By the way, what I recommend, and I'll be honest with you, would I recommend this cream for like a daily use? No. I really like using it in the salon because it just smells really good. And smell is a component, right? It's one of the components of just the whole atmosphere being very relaxing and fresh and everything else. But I think it would bother me if I had to use it after each hand wash. So it's nice for after a manicure, beautiful. The other one too. Maybe um, if you wanna, if you love the smell, use it after your weekly manicure, that would be a good idea. But like every day, I don't think I would wanna use it. Just, just to let you know, in case you're curious. Okay, so this is how the color looks. Unfortunately, um, it's a little dark outside, so the lighting is really bad. So it doesn't really show how beautiful this color is, but um, maybe you can imagine. <laughs> It is really, really nice. I'll try to take a picture maybe outside or a little video outside tomorrow to show you. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.